And a very good morning to you. Look, I even remembered to turn the TV screen over today. Get me on fire. <laughs> I take your houses on fire this morning. It's our Jane Alcock. Look what she's been making for us. Oh, yeah. This is Jane Star. Um, what have you called it, Jane? I call it the folded star, but the ladies, uh, the ladies should be and Jane gents star. on, it's the Alcock All Star. Alcock's <laughs> All Star. <laughs> there is no other name. Um, can we change that, guys, on the website just to make sure we've got all cocks all star? <laughs> That's what the ladies and gents are called that used to make them. And they showed their pictures. It's a beautiful came. thing. Right, Natasha's strippers. It's a beautiful thing. Just check your mic. It's disappearing again. It does like to do that, doesn't it? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. I'll just, I'll, I'll do you some... <laughs> One of those. Uh, good morning, everybody. Oh, your mum's watching already. Hello, Kate. How are you? Um, we, we, it is, Benny. We were just talking about you in a good in a good way. In a good way. Uh, good morning, Paula. Good morning, Rebecca and Linda and Tracy and Kate and Joe. Hello. Who else have we got? Leanne and Margaret. Good morning, and Martine and um, Severine. Such a pretty name, isn't it? It is. I'm not sure if I say it right, but how I say it sounds great. Um, and if it needs to be said another way. <laughs> Emma's just messaged me. Really, all cocks, all star? Question mark! Exclamation mark! Well, you know, sounds great. Why don't you put it in brackets, Emma, and then we'll find it. Morning, Jojo. How are you? Oh, she's got a lovely sunny day in the Isle of Man today. It's horrible here. I mean, like really miserable. Good job it's nice in here, isn't it? It is. It's lovely and warm and cosy in here. I'm so glad we got the twinkly lights out. Yeah. Because. Doesn't matter what's going on out there now, does it? Uh, Tracy and Anne, good morning. And Heather, hello. And we've got the Crafty Purple Cat with us as well. Hello. And Kirsty, are you working today? Oh, very rainy and noisy here in my conservatory. Yeah. We've got, I don't know if you've noticed it, at the top of the stairs, there's like a dome that lets in light. Yeah. When it rains, whoo, when it hails, is even worse. Yeah. You think, my goodness. My goodness. Um, uh, you see Soggy and Banbury. Yeah, you see Pam, it's Soggy here too. We're not too far from, from Banbury. Um, Leanne says, good morning. What a beautiful design. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, cold but sunny here in Snowdonia. Oh, Snowdonia. Have you been? Yes. Have it's you? Beautiful Snowdonia. It's on my list. Do you think Maud would like it in Snowdonia? She'd love it. She would, wouldn't she? I might never get her back. That would be it. Oh, Jen. Kate's placed her order already. <laughs> She's on fire. Yeah, she, she wasn't going to miss out on this one. No, <laughs> no, no, no. We've got three colourways this morning for this. Um, and the other thing to tell you... You know, we were just talking about dogs. Yeah. And then, and then Colette says, Morning, ladies. Muzzle in Wirral. <laughs> I'm like, what, dog muzzle? No, 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 as in muzzly weather. So, yeah. Took me a moment. Misty I'm drizzle. Not, yeah, misty muzzle. Um, oh, Elizabeth said her mum used to live in the Isle of Man. Oh, for about 30 years. Nice. Top of the morning, ladies, uh, says Jacqueline. I don't know if she says it in that accent. Uh, talking <laughs> of all cocks, Glenn's on board. Good morning, Glenn. Uh, you just got home? I'll send him to sleep. <laughs> I'll send him to sleep. Oh, that's nice. God, it's your show that does that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Glenn, by the way, is uh, Jane's husband, just in case you're wondering, so that's okay. Uh, morning, Natasha and Jane. I've ordered the ice blue. Oh, the ice blue. Didn't want to miss out, says Amanda. Do you know what? I don't blame you. Um, it's like a starry, starry night, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. It makes me want to sing. I won't. I won't. I'm going to put that there, because that is one of the colourways. Can you see it if I pop it there? Yeah. And that is this colourway. So... We went on a little shopping trip for this, didn't we, Jane? Oh, yes. I do like our remote shopping trips. It's just as well we don't actually go. We'd be in a whole world of trouble, wouldn't we? You get a, a half metre of the Moda, which is the fancy schmancy... Um, it's elegance, it's called. Moda uh, oh, elegance. There we go. <coughs> Not fancy Collection. schmancy at all. Elegance. There we are. So you get a half metre of that and then a fat quarter of everything else. And this was the stuff we had to buy in specially because it was sparkly and very pretty. Um, ha, 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 ha. Which was just rather gorgeous. And look, Jane's written all out. Fat quarter of everything, a half metre of everything else. Thanks, Jane. Whee! These were a find, weren't they? Oh, they're lovely. They're sparkly. Oh. And the glitter doesn't come off. No. I don't know how it's in there. 
I don't I, know. Sometimes just don't ask. But it's not in there. It's not coming off, is it? No, it's lovely. Uh, which is very exciting indeed. Oh, I've ordered more orange, by the way. Mm, yeah. Good. Oh, yeah. I've already been shopping this morning. Don't you worry about that. Uh, this is the other colourway. Ha ha. Nicey. Wouldn't that look nice on my leather sofa? Would. Just saying. Um, yeah. So basically, just um, pick a colourway, any colourway, because they're all rather gorgeous. Or if you're gifting. We didn't include the instructions because we had a feeling that some of you might want more than one. You know, that happens. Yeah. And then this is the starry, starry night. Even Josh, this morning, went, I like that sparkly batiki thing. <laughs> um, for which he meant this. And this is your <laughs> half metre piece. That, it, it's not actually a batik. It's actually a print. But it's got some sparkle going on there. I don't know how they do it, but it does look like there should be a big moon. Yes, it's beautiful. Um, but it's okay, because then we've got the cloud covering said moon. And then all of these. Oh, Jane. We were so right to buy these. Whoops. You can't beat a bit of sparkly fabric. You no. Know? Especially at this time of year. It would be rude not to. No. It's just that bit of zing. I love a bit of sparkle. Well, you bring sparkle to Natasha Makes every day, Jane, so <laughs> oh, we're very grateful you. for that. <laughs> um, I'm not going to waffle on for too much longer. I'm going to let Jane crack on. Uh, what I will say is that our wide 56, it's about 56, 57 inch quilt backing fabric is back in stock. Um, and so I don't know if you know that we've got the white and the green as well. I can see that just out there. I'm not sure if that hasn't made its way to the warehouse yet. So uh, just in case you didn't know, we've got that as well. Um, so yeah, that's being dispatched from us. It is the House of Alistair stuff, but we've got it here so that it can be dispatched from here because, you know, we can do that now. We couldn't when we first started and now we can. It's all good. Um, I'm going to unplug this and take it with me, Jane. I'm taking the whole lot, plugging everything. Righty ho. Because I know that, you know, sometimes we like to have a little chat. Um, if you missed yesterday's show, Ah, what am I doing? Uh, so elegant, so elegant. Uh, then you miss Titi making this amazing rucksack, which was beautiful. It's a Mrs. H design, it's really lovely. gorgeous. She's lovely, Titi. I watched a little bit of it and she was just like so fun. nice. It was like two and a half hours of just laughter. It was beautiful. Um, and our smart of the week is the beautiful feathers got to take a look at that so that's on a special deal we have a smart of the week every every week uh, so that you know if you fancy a little bit off it's just our little treat to you if you fancy that one um i might have nabbed one it's beautiful and because it's got the feathers and it's navy it goes with everything just saying ah, careful i can't juggle everything it turns out <laughs> oh no there we go good morning everybody morning jane oh, morning miss mrs alcott slightly <laughs> dark damp drizzly oh it's horrible november day never mind never mind should i shut the door keep the warmth in yeah that's nice yeah um okay so the star folded star it's how long have you been making this for jane um two plus years i think I think it is about cracker. two years. Um, it's not my design. I wrote the instructions for it. It was presented to me on um, Sewing Quarter. And they said, can you make this? And I said, yes, I can. Can you write the instructions? Um, yes, I can. <laughs> you can now. And from there, it just went. Snowballed. Snowballed. It's just, I mean, it's so lovely. It's really effective. It's not too difficult to do. Um, I would say that a begin, not a complete beginner, but a, a confident beginner would have no problem with it. Um, it's just so effective. When I first did it, I made it into a table runner. So I did three stars um, and put them together. Um, since then, we've made it into cushions and table centres and all sorts of things. Um, my mum made one and she has it hanging on her wall. And she did the stars, um, same fabrics, but slightly different colour com ways. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute and and that's lovely and it's in the colours of her lounge and it just hangs on the wall oh, and it looks gorgeous. super 
Um, and does that hang there all year round? Yes, because it was done in colours that went with her colour scheme in her lounge. Very so nice. it it's, doesn't have to be Christmassy. I'd quite like that framed somewhere. I'd like one for each for the kids' bedrooms. Yeah. Well, you can do that, can't you? I mean, it's not... We do it because it's sort of festive, but it's, it doesn't have to be. I think that's one that's going to come out I mean, through the could, winter months, isn't yeah. it? And just be utterly gorgeous. This Gemma fabric said, is particularly oh, autumnal. Yeah. Not, I mean, it does look slightly Christmassy, but it's more autumnal with the berries and the leaves on it. Um, so, so Gemma said that she rubbed it vigorously yesterday and the glitter doesn't come off. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, I did wonder what she was doing, I'll be honest. It's slightly... It's got, it's, oh man, it's just gorgeous. It's, 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 there's a texture to it, isn't there? Yeah, it's got, it's sort of rubbery, which sounds weird, but it isn't rubbery, but it's got that sort of, I don't know, I, I suppose it's the, it the must process have some of... some sort of coating, mustn't yeah. it, to just seal in the glitter so that it, you don't get glitter everywhere? And when I first got it out and I was taking it off the bolt, I was like, ooh, this is a bit weird, and it was sort of sticking to itself, and I was like, oh, I don't know, this is going to sew. But actually, it sews beautifully, and on the back, it's cotton. You can see it's just it's lovely cotton fabric. So it's obviously something in the process, and maybe the bolt had been, you know, standing there for a while before we had it. So um, once it was pulled apart, it was fine. And but I, I sewed, think it helps when it's folded. Sort of hold, helps hold it, doesn't yes, it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I sewed it and had to unpick a seam, and I was like, oh no, it's going to leave holes. It's going to leave marks. But I ironed it on the back and, and they disappeared, you know, just rubbed it slightly and then ironed it and it was fine. So it was not like, it works just like any other cotton fabric. So basically what we're saying is we've put it through at paces. Yeah, it's Gemma's it's been, rubbed it. It's been You've rubbed it. it. I rubbed it and rubbed it and rubbed it. <laughs> just iron it from the back, press it from the back. Yeah, I would. Yeah. I mean, I pressed it on the front as well and it's been fine. So it doesn't stick to your iron or anything like that. So yeah, there's no problem with it. So when you get your um, fabrics, you want to decide before you do any cutting or anything really the colour way you want to have it. Um, I mean, this star it, it works beautifully. You can you could do this star with two fabrics, as long as you've got the contrast between. I'm just giggling because, you know, Josh said he liked the batiki one at the back. Yeah. He's just messaged to say this is more awesome than the photo I saw of the salt batiki <laughs> thing. I didn't realise it had a bit of glittery goodness in it. Yeah. We've rubbed off on Josh. I the know. glitter won't, but we have. No. He now loves glittery goodness. And this. Our work here is done. <laughs> this one that looks like sky. Oh, do you want to pop that up by the machine. Go on, let's get a close look at. Yeah, that one's called <laughs> steel, and you can see. Look at the sparkle in that. I've got to call that it is that um way. that way. That that That's is a it. proper frosty starry night, isn't look it? Look at it. It really glistens. It's not as sparkly as the gold. You can see the difference, but there's enough in there too. There's more discreet sparkle. It's just so lovely, so lovely. Anyway, you can just go on waxing lyrical about how sparkly it is all night. Um, <laughs> 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 all could. night? It's only 10 o'clock <laughs> in the morning. I mean, all we day. could really wax yeah. lyrical about some sparkle. In case you didn't know, I love a bit of sparkle. <laughs> We'd never have noticed, We'd Jane. never have known, would you? No, I'm really glad you um, pointed it out. No, I just happened to mention that. And um, so, yeah, I just had a look at it and thought, right, what colourway do I want? I wanted it to, to gradiate, really. Um, we've got a bit of green in there, and we've got the oranges and golds, and then the browns and, and deeper oranges and, and reds in the, in the brown one. I've sort of taken the colours from the print, really, to sort of bring out the colours. I really wanted to put some of this blue in, but it didn't work. It just didn't, it just didn't, wasn't doing it, was it? No. Because you've got beautiful. that greeny blue, that, that greeny, yeah, this, that's as close as we're going to get to That's lovely. Um, I think you've done a cracking job. What I love about Jane is we take a wander through the warehouse, don't we? Yeah. When new fabric comes in. And I love this because you work in a very similar way to me. Yeah. And we go, first, we bought it because we love it. Yes. <laughs> and then we work out what we're going to do with it. Then what can I do with it? Yeah. <laughs> We, first of all, we have to have it. Yes. And secondly, now what are we going to do with it? And it yeah. sort of inspires. And when you saw this, you were like, oh. Yes. I was like, can I do something with this? Yeah. Because Natasha was like, this is going for half me to heaven. So I was like, no, can I have it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and occasionally we wrestle each other for it, but that's yeah. fine. No. So what you have to think about when you're doing your folded star is the seven 
fabrics and then the last one is your main fabric so we've given you the half meter for that the half meter will do the all of this front and the back of a cushion and it will make three stars and the triangles you need to insert for the table runner what what what, what? it'll make three stars yes will it really yeah from the fat quarters you'll get three stars from it oh my goodness so I have written the instructions to do the block for the folded star. Right. And then I've written on, the, on those, with those instructions, you get a brief instruction about how to put the cushion together. Yeah. And a brief instruction of the measurements you need to cut the triangles to make the inserts for the table runner. So like two in one? Yeah. You're amazing. So Thanks, they Jane. are very brief. I mean, if you are a beginner, you might need to talk to somebody within your quilting group or your local quilting shop just to get a bit more of a... Or you can look at other table runner patterns I've done and that'll give you an idea because it's done with a triangle insert. So it comes like that and then comes down to a point either end. That makes I was sense. going to make one because I've got this funny time zone that I work in and I think <laughs> I can do <laughs> loads of stuff in a day. You and, and of course me. you can't actually. Um, this is a, you could do this in a day, the cushion. You make the cushion cover in a day, no problem. So yeah. So when you're thinking about your colours, think about the last colour here, the seventh colour, if you like. That's the one that really forms the star shape. Oh, so have it as that, a highlight. You, that's the one that gives you the definition. Oh, so now, we've put a yellow in both kits. Would you yeah. put the yellow? Well, I thought that. When I was looking at the browns, I yeah. thought, yeah, we'll have the yellow there. But then I looked at the dark brown. Ooh. And I thought, actually... The dark brown will give that much more definition and look more blended it, yeah. than the yellow. It'll it's sort really of look like a shadow actually, won't yeah. it? That'd look amazing. Because it's so yellow and that and the brown is a bit more goldy, I thought it was a little bit too stark. I don't know if you can see that. Do you want to put it by the machine? I'll do there it there. Go. I just didn't like the flow of that. If you can it's entirely up to you. I mean, obviously, you've got half metre of one fabric, which I've sort of taken the idea of that you'd want that as your main fabric. But the others, you can put them in any combination you want, really. And as I said, you can use it with just two colours. You could just have a stripy star. Oh, which know. might be nice for the kids' bedroom, actually. Yeah. And, or you can choose four colours and repeat it again. So you could have four of the same and, and just repeat again. You, it's there's eight, there's an eight, there's eight. I'm thinking pieces in it. Two blues, a grey and a white for Freddie's bedroom. Yeah, be amazing. Yeah, that would look lovely. Yeah. Um, just so that everybody knows, Emily has chosen the half meter heavens this week. Oh, I bet they'll be fabulous. She's good with colour. She's really good with colour. Um, oh, there's only one blue left. So if oh. Um, we might have to try and order some more. I think we probably blue. could have this, could we? Yeah, potentially. Yeah. yeah. I think the motors, once it's gone, it's gone. But these ones... They were ones we might be able to get hold of. Yeah. Let me let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Um, yeah, no, so Half Meter Heavens tomorrow, Emily's choice. She had great fun choosing them. She loves doing it, doesn't she? She does. She? Although she she's calling everything it. blue, which oh. is slightly... Oh, I'm that's okay. To, she now can say green. But otherwise, nice everything's blue. And they're really not. Um, oh, OK. Helen's got the red one, as Steve wants it in the living room. Good choice. Good nice. choice. Nice, nice, um, nice. And Helen's made loads of these from your lovely tutorials before. They're very therapeutic to do. They Easy are. and stunning when finished. It's a nice bit of mindful crafting, I'm going to say, because actually, there's for the actual star, there's not much sewing. Um, and Jackie says these are very addictive to make. Have several cushions and a table runner on the go. Brilliant, yeah. brilliant. Well, look, I know that this isn't something new, new. Um, oh, morning, Laurie. There may be some ladies that, and gentlemen that have joined us since you've been doing this that, that don't know anything about this. And the also, star. I always see people ask, can you remember when it was? Or I don't yes. have the instructions for. So we've got the instructions. They'll be digital, they'll be physical. So then you've got it. Yeah. And then we've covered that off. Yeah. Kaboom. It's there. Yeah. You know, and we've, we're doing another demonstration for the people that have joined us and don't know anything about the star. Then you're in for a treat. Because it's lovely. <laughs> so, from each of your fat quarters, you need to cut eight 
um, four by three inch rectangles. So whip your stripology out basically. Yeah, and that's, that includes the half meter piece. Now what I would say to you is, cut your half meter piece in half to make two fat quarters and put one of the fat quarters to one side and then you know you've got that for oh, the backing okay. yeah. and the additional border and if you're going to do it in a table runner, the additional, because you cut um, five and something, I think it's five and a quarter inch square and cut it into four for the right, insert right. triangles. Yeah. So you've got that to one side okay. and then cut from each of your eight fabrics then, yeah. your eight, four and three, four by three rectangles. Yes. There's a lot of eights by. Um, <laughs> I know I'm there, I'm with you, yeah, yeah. So, and then again, just look at them again in the smaller pieces and see whether you're happy with the, with the combination. Lay them out and see if you're happy with it. Because you've, you've still got, at this point, you've got time to change your mind without unpicking anything. Fiona is not believing you that it's easy. She said, is it really easy? It looks so hard. Mind you, Jane makes everything feel doable. Yeah. Um, so it's new to her. So I don't do so complicated. Thanks. No. I don't no do need. complicated. I no don't. I'm, I'm not a complicated person. Other people might tell you otherwise. <laughs> um, to your mind, you're not, <laughs> not complicated. No, you're not complicated. You're fabulous. Not From your main fabric, for one block, you need two five inch squares additional to your rectangles. So not off your not off your fat quarter that you put no, to one side because you're not touching that yet. No, just right. from your main fabric. Okay. And these are going to be the corners. These form the corners here. Oh okay, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Okay. So I'd leave them at squ in squares at this point. You can cut them in, in, in across into a diagonal to make four triangles if you want to and put them to one side, but you do it when you start folding because you might just start do one bit and do another bit. You know what I'm like about biased edges and stretching, so leave yes. them the squares. You take all of your rectangles and you turn, um, you're going to fold it over with the wrong side facing up. You're just going to turn down a quarter of an inch and press it down. Now, if, you, you know, if you're a beginner and you're a bit worried about um, doing a quarter of an inch by eye, you could draw it on, you could use your ruler. The Creative Grid rulers have got a beautiful frosted edge there. So you could just line that up against and just make sure you folded it over by a quarter of an inch before you press it. Okay. You, could, you could mark it if you wanted to. Just line your quarter of an inch edge up and mark it. You know where you are with your abilities. Quite a few of us that have been doing it for a while, we can see a quarter of an inch by eye. If you're using a quarter of an inch all the time, you, can, you get to recognise it. If you're not so confident with that, do whatever suits you. If you've got one of the seamy things, you were using it the, the other day, you've got a quarter of an inch. Seamy thing. Oh, seam the seam's guys. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, shall you I can some more of those? I wonder how you can actually got. bring that over and you could iron that on top of there because it's metal, but obviously it'll get warm over time. But that will help you. It doesn't have to be too accurate, but be as accurate as you can. Don't stress about it being exactly, exactly. Now, your mum wants to know how she sends a photo of her star table runner. If you send it to info at natashamakes.com, then SJ can put it on our community makes page. Yeah. That would be amazing. Or you could WhatsApp it to me. Or WhatsApp it to, uh, to Jane. Yes, all of those things. Because I'm not sure that mum's phone will is connected to her email. However works, mm. we'll, fi we'll find a way. We will find a way. Um, now, morning, something Kaz. that you will need additional to the bundle that you've got is some, I'm, I've called it foundation fabric. It's okay. background fabric. You're not going to see it. So if you've got a, a bit of old sheet or a bit of calico, even interfacing will work. You need a 10 inch square of it. Natasha has some lovely calico on the website. Just well, I've just ordered another off. bolt of it actually as well. Um, what would you like? A ruler. Have you lost? Um, they're down. 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 Between, no, they're over right there. Uh, no, no, if you want the straight ones, they're over there. Over there between the Excuse land and me. the sky. Oh, no, that's Faulty Towers, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> there it is. That's the sea. <laughs> over there between the land and the sky. You're going to cut a 10-inch square of whatever background you use. I used, I've used... Um, Interfacing, you know, nice. medium weight interface. Yeah. You don't use the lightweight because it's too, it's a little bit. I've used muslin. Muslin's a little bit stretchy. Okay. 
calico is the best thing okay really okay it's you're not going to see it but it's what you sew on to right it you want an, a lightish fabric Jane, could you do me a favor and shush all those fabrics a new word um just across a bit because the then sweat. i can do this Ta -da! Ta -da! and we can see what you're doing Lovely. look at that so 10 inch square you're going to cut you're going to draw and i recommend you just use an ordinary pencil don't use your fabric marker that irons off ask me how i know <laughs> um oh <laughs> just and a pencil is the best thing again it's not going to be shown so you're marking it in half into quarters and across the diagonal both diagonals do you know jane i think i did the original share with you on this and i've completely i remember being mesmerized by it then yeah i think we did didn't we? yeah 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 because it was phenomenal and i completely i did it several I, I demonstrated it several times because it it was really popular yeah and as i say i didn't design it it's not my design i wrote the instructions out um I read, I'm very sorry, I don't know who did design it. It was just from a photograph. It was just, yeah, you were presented with it so and told to get on with it. Um, so you take your first fabric. What I would suggest you do is you put your fabric into piles, starting with one, one being the one that you want in the middle. Okay. You're not going to see much of one, of fabric one. You're not going to see much of that. Put it into piles in the order that you're going to use it. Nessie Margaret says, a hint for the foundation fabric. If you use the same colour as the first fold, then you won't get a peep of the foundation. This is true. But if you sew it properly, you won't get a peep of it. <laughs> There's that as well. There's that as well. But yes, that's a good tip. That's a very handy tip. You're going to fold your rectangle in half and just finger press it, just so you've got a very light crease. And you're going to place the very first rectangle up against that line yeah. that you've drawn, the horizontal line, and the fold will run along the vertical line. That okay. way you know it's centre centred. Um Jane, would you like to say good morning to Isaac as well? He's watching. Is he? Yeah. Hello, my darling boy. Oh. My best boy. Um yeah. missing him terribly, because of course he lives up in Oxford and we live down here and it's like <laughs> baby oh <laughs> but there it's, you go it's a toughie isn't it yeah i think we'll be all right for christmas because it's just there'll be just two households well yeah two households for christmas because yeah, i'm in my mum's bubble dog? anyway so so yeah we'll be okay who gets his fiance's dog for christmas well lola can come with her come with him if she wants it to but she lola for christmas she'd probably stay with granny and granddad up there but she's always welcome because she's gorgeous, <laughs> even though she is big. <laughs> she's what, a St. Bernard. Yeah, I was going to say, would you like to tell everyone what, what, what she she's is? She's a St. Bernard and she's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Elizabeth's had house viewers. Uh, this is the, the house sale continues. And she oh. says that the house viewers wanted, to, uh, wanted me to talk to them. Um, <laughs> it's like <laughs> walking around with her iPad going, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, yeah, yeah, what? yeah. <laughs> Mummy and Daisy, who is three, no doubt they want to go on the rocking horse. Tell them you've got the stuff you need to do, Elizabeth. Sorry, yeah. sorry, would love to, but <laughs> you see, Anne's had neighbours coming to check. She didn't need any shopping. <laughs> trying to shop, trying to buy a star. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this is the trouble, Fabric isn't shopping. It? Excuse me, I'm just watching something. <laughs> At least you can always watch back, can't you? Later, that's the main thing. Absolutely. Um, Where are we? So at? we've pinned that first one down. Pin it on the sides, don't pin it down the middle. Place your next one on and again fold it in half, place it in and you're just dropping that down quarter of an inch. Again you can take your ruler and check it, do it by eye. In theory you'll see where the fold is underneath. Whichever way works for you, do it that way. And you carry on folding, placing and pinning, pinning through the layers just to hold it down. Um, working your way down oh, oh, Elizabeth pinning them in she'll place. Have Lola. That's all right. Oh, Lola can go to her for Christmas. All right. <laughs> Would you like a slightly grubby otter hound? 
I could set you mood. Yes, but she's so beautiful. <laughs> she can't help it if she gets a muddy beard. She does get a muddy lady beard. <laughs> it is it is the problem with an otter hound. She oh, bless her. She's got to go for a little... All good thoughts for Maud today. She's got to go and have a little off on her ears today. Oh, bless her. Yeah. We'll get to the bottom of it. But I have to say, it's been fun trying to get stuff in her ears. I can imagine. She's a wriggly yeah. dog, isn't she, at she the best of times? a big wriggly dog as well. So you just literally layer them up? You're just layering them down in the order that you want them to be. Right. Lining them up with the line, um, making sure that they're there. And then the last one should come level with the bottom of your 10 inch piece of fabric. If it overhangs by a few threads, don't stress about it. If it hangs, overhangs by a lot, just go back and just measure your um, gaps between your fabrics again, just to make sure. I'm just looking at this and it looks to me like the turquoise is a little bit deeper than the others. It is beautiful though. I don't blame you. So, um, so you've got them all pinned in place and then you turn your fabric round and you start again with the white and you place it right up against the fold of the first row of fabrics okay but not overlapping so there's no gap in the foundation right but it's right up there against it okay I seem to have memories of stitching right through the middle of this at some yeah, point yeah you do there's a oh, lot I'm not dreaming it no oh okay that's good. right that's right and so I'm just going to place these down now because I'm just going to trust that I'm in the middle because <laughs> otherwise we'll be here all morning just placing the fabrics. Karen says muddy lady beards exclamation mark if someone's just tuned in I wonder what we're talking about well you know yes. it's a thing yeah. <laughs> and Leslie's just fascinated she's never seen this done before she doesn't care about a lady beard um, oh, Elizabeth says she'll have Maud as well and Donna oh that's all right we've got lots of Maud cover that's yep. all good. Maud's beautiful. And Margot and Eric is just a dream. But Eric. then he's an older boy, so he's very well behaved. Yeah. Until there's food around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good old Eric. Okay. So that's your first step. So you've got one row from the fabric one down. And you've got the next row, starting with fabric one, butted right up, the folded edge butted right up together. Should we do a sneaky close-up, Jane, and Let's just show it. everyone just... Can we see that? Oh, no, hang on. There we go. There we are. Oh, you yeah! See? And it's just, there's no gap there. It's just literally butted right up together. So the next step is to take your ruler and two inches from the ed outside edge. Now, if you've been folding this and you're the sort of person that's happy to do it, now then, what did I do with that pen? I had a, wa a fabric marker, the waterproof one. Never mind. I haven't touched anything, promise. No, it is. No, it's not. Oh. Hmm. I don't know what I did with it. Did my kids nick it? No, I don't. Probably put it somewhere else. I'll use Emily's the fade away one. Emily's been making me draw pictures of Stephen before <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> pictures of Daddy. Oh, how lovely. They were, they were just, um, what were they? They were just stick men, but oh. she was just laughing her head off going, It's Daddy! <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Bless. You just love my art there, darling. It's all so, good. Two inches in because it's four inches across, so in, in theory it's half. Now, if you've been folding it, um, you'll have a fold, so you could sew along the crease. If you didn't want to mark it, you could use the crease yeah. as a guide. And then you're going to take it to your machine. Now, put your walking foot on. This oh, okay. is the best thing to, to use a walking foot if you've got one. Your presser foot will do it, but you have to take it very, very slowly with a presser foot. Have you pulled it down on this? Yeah, you it's already down there. Cool. Um, and you're just going to sew along that line that you've marked. <laughs> Those has just just asked what I'm watching when I should be working. All he heard was muddy lady beard. <laughs> <laughs> saws, saws. So just make sure that the layers stay folded down. Just gone off the line here slightly, but it doesn't matter. 
Gemma says that we love a bearded lady at Natasha Makes. Look, I just say um, face coverings hide a multitude of sins. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. That's right. So you've got that folded across there. So you've sewn that now. So you've got this effect going on. So it's right through the middle of those two rows. Nice. Okay. You turn it around. You, place, you fold these up out of the way. Just stick a pin in just to hold them down for now. And then you start again. Oops. With your number one fabric. This one doesn't want to stick down. There we go. And you want to place that. Again, fold it in half so you've got that mark of the halfway. You want to place that right up against where you've sewn. Following that line down. And again, you'll go down and you'll, fo you'll layer these down <coughs> in the same way as you did before, taking your time, unlike me, and measuring the quarter of an inch, making sure you've got the quarter of an inch. And your colours are in the same order each time because that's how you get the layered effect of the star. And you'll pin as you go. And once you've got those ones pinned down, you then need to turn it around again. So it's in the opposite direction. You'll move these ones out of the way again. So now just flip them the opposite yeah, direction. Yeah, you might want to just pull them out of the way slightly onto the diagonal and pin them because remember, we're going to have to sew down oh, this line. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, just yeah. fold them out of the way just slightly, pin them down. You might want to put more pins in if you need to. But again, you're going to have to tuck that right in against the fold of the previous one. Nice. And you'll go again and you'll layer that. Now, Jill says she's going to make this, uh, but she's got to finish off her Chi Pounder first. Um, she can't remember what date the demo was. So I am going to bat that over to SJ, uh, who should be watching, and just say, SJ, she when is the keeper it? of all things um, show-wise. She remembers these things and yeah. I have no clue. So again, once you've got those lines done, you'll, you'll sew along that line. So you have um, the, the north, south, east, west done. Then you go to the diagonal. Now, it gets a bit tricky at the diagonal, as you can imagine. If I just sew this bit here, you wouldn't do this. You'd wait until you've got all of them done. Oh, OK. As you can imagine, as you get to the diagonal part, it gets quite bulky here. So you've got to expose that line there. So you're pinning that away. And you've got to get that white piece tucked up into that space there. Oh, we're going again. So you do the diagonal lines. So you get the diagonal line there. Now that's one diagonal done. Let's move that out of the way. That's one diagonal done there. Now the last diagonal, and it really does get bulky now, and you really do have to take your time and just really poke it. So they just go, they just go on opposites. Yeah. Hang on. How many? You're doing um, four rows, aren't you? But this is why you you do eight of each because you've got eight going that way and eight going that way. So when you come to doing the last diagonal, as I say, it's very bulky. And just poke that in. If you've got your um, unpicker or a bradle, you can just poke it in. And then make sure it's in that gap, but lying flat. And then just pin that. And you can use this as sort of like a cushion pad to pin into. Just to hold it in place, making sure that it's centr central to the and then put put the next ones on oh. and you'll have you'll have all of this for the next line that goes okay. in and again that one you really do need to sort of try and get the the, the middle bit right in there it's not it's not easy but when you're when you're doing it and not demonstrating it you can really sort of get in there and <laughs> 
rummage. Push it, push it in with your nail and or a brad oil or your unpicker or anything like that. Something that will just push it into the gap. Yeah. You want as lift. Well, you don't want any fabric showing really. You don't okay. want. You want it be, to be right up against each other, but you don't want them overlapping. Okay, because otherwise it adds extra. It does. Um, Jill, it was the fourth of August for Choo Choo. So then you've got all of this going on. You got like there's a lot going on there. There's like it looks like a rag bag really. And what you're going to do now is you're going to take um, two corners. It doesn't matter which ones. You just need to pull two of the rows apart, so exposing an eighth, a, a quarter you know, segment of the foundation fabric. Right. Now the first fold is the most tricky one. There's Once you've got that done, yeah, you're okay. So you take the rectangle that you've got here and you fold it down, the folded edge down, towards the sewn line that you've just made. And just press that down. Don't pull it because it's, a, it's now you've got a biased edge, so you'll stretch it. You don't want to stretch it. You just want to, pull, to fold that over so it makes a triangle. You then fold that over, back over, so that that triangle then fills that gap. Can you, is there, is there we go any, I'm close? really sorry Jane no, to ask, fine. but is there any way? So, I have folded it over there to make the triangle. Yeah. You can see that it's white on white, which is probably is not the best thing to see. And then we folded it back over so it lies within that gap that we've made. Oh nice. Okay. Yeah. Now you're going to take that fold and you're going to bring it back to the sewn line. So you're folding it so back. So how up. many layers have you got on itself? It's only one. This is a th the very first layer. So it's just one of the rectangles. If you can see, that's the first number one fabric. We folded it over into a triangle. So that it was level with the seam that we've made previously. Press that down. Think just finger pressing. Yeah. But pressing it rather than pulling it because we don't want to stretch it lay it over the gap don't worry if it comes bigger than the gap but sort of it's filling that gap and then we pull it back again so that folded edge is going against that seam line and you only do this for the middle one right but it's a bit fiddly for the for the first row and then you do it with the left hand side exactly the same so you're going to fold that over press it down with your finger bring it across so it fills the gap and then fold it back on itself and you'll see that it lines up it looks a little bit like a pair per airplane if I can pull that up slightly I don't know if we can get that in yeah there you are you can see that now so it's folded over so that's folding it over to make the, the triangle folding it across so that it fills the gap of the foundation and then just folding it back on itself and they both fill that gap then to if I move my hand out of the way there you can see it a bit better then so the nice. next layer you're just folding it down to create the triangle but you want to make sure that it's folded right up against that seam and finger press the triangle and then lie it across it's a bit like um swaddling a baby i think at this point now because you're folding <laughs> the you're folding the triangle over and then you bring you bring the right one across and then you bring the less left one across the top of that it's not going to fill the gap there's going to be a, a, a space at the side here don't worry as long as it fills it folds over itself that's fine and you do the, the next one. So you do the third layer. And again, you're just folding it into a triangle, finger pressing it, bringing it across, right sides across. Now you want to bring it across tightly, but don't pull it because you'll end up with it pulling it all out of shape. Right, okay. So it's lying it, you know, as, as flat and as, as you can, but without pulling it, distorting it out of shape. You might just want to use your finger just to tuck it 
where it's sewn down just to tuck it down and give you a nice sharp point. You sometimes feel like you need an extra hand at this point. Once you've got the first three done and you've got that first quarter done yeah. or eighth done, once you've done the first one, you think, oh, right, this isn't so bad. But that Good. very first one, you're a bit... <gasps> should, we, should we show? Yeah. Yeah, go on then. So we've done three, oh, wrapped so, over. So it's the first the first one you fold back on itself, and then the next ones you just fold You just fold into triangles then, yeah. like that, and then wrap them over the top. Now, once you've done three, you're going to take it to your machine, and you're just going to sew quite low down in a sort of wonky V shape. And you're just sewing through those layers, down and then across, just to hold the layers. You want it quite low down because you don't want to see this line of stitching. I can just turn that round, we can see that close up. I don't know if we can see that line of stitching there. It's not neat, it's not tidy, it's just a line of stitching literally to hold those three layers down. And then you go again and you do two layers this time. So you fold it over, finger press the triangle and bring the right sides over. If you're left handed, you might feel more comfortable starting on the left hand side, working left to right. But because I'm right handed, right to left is better for me. Right. Whichever way you do it, do it all the same way. Right, OK. So just be consistent. Yeah. I think that's always the thing, isn't it, with anything like this? It's just always be consistent. And once you get into the rhythm of it, you will find it very relaxing. It really is quite therapeutic <sighs> mindfulness, you know? We love all of that. So we're going to do two layers this time, folding them down. You can see I'm sort of pushing that fold into the seam so I get it right in. Finger pressing it and then pulling it across. Karen said she's made a few of these. Um, using your tutorial and her friends were very impressed with their cushions. Yeah, they look so effective, they really do. They're so, give a real impressive finish, don't they? And then, so we've done yeah. two layers and we're going to sew again. So two, you do a sewn line after the first three and then it's every two after that. This is all in your instructions, yeah, by the way. Yeah, this is all written in. Panic ye not. We've got lots of nice pictures as well to go, you know, step by step pictures. As I've done lots, so, you know, at virtually every step, really. And then we've got the last two layers. Well, there's still three layers, but we're going to do two more layers, folding across. Just tucking that in at the top there, you want that nice and, and flat to give the point. Oh, it hasn't switched across. There we go. So we're going again, just folding that down. Just making sure you've got it right in and bringing it across, folding it down. You want it nice and flat, but I think finger pressing is as much as you want to do. I wouldn't take the iron to it. Okay. I think you'd lose the texture then. It'd be too flat. It, yeah, it does have a lovely texture to it, doesn't yeah. it? It's the sort of thing that it's you want to... It's very tactile and you do want to stroke it. Yeah, that's exactly it. So you've got this last two layers here. You've still got your very last layer going on. So just pin that in place. Now this time you're going to have to come right down here to sew it. Okay. But make sure you catch it just above where the raw edge is there. Helen would like to know how many does, uh, cushions does this kit make? You will be able to make three stars, but you'd only have enough backing for one. So you can get three stars out of the fat quarters, yeah. but the extra half metre will only make you one cushion back and border. We haven't got any more of the fancy schmancy uh, moda, have we? No, of the red we haven't. Brown. So do we need to offer one of the other backing, uh, one of the other star colours for the backing? Could do. A half Could metre do. of that, maybe. Yeah. Maybe that's the way. Do you have a favourite colour, guys, that you'd like sort of an extra half metre of if it were available? If we've got stock to... Um... You would only get... You will get, from, from this kit, you'd get one cushion or a table runner. Right, OK. 
because there's enough fabric to do the borders around the cushion and the back or the inserted triangles for the table runner. Nice, okay. Um, you will get, you could get three stars out of all of the fat quarters. If you then used a different colour for the backing? Yeah. Okay, okay, all right. Um, let me see then. Have we got any of the red glittery stuff? Yeah. Or the, have we got any of that left over after these kits have made? I think so, yes, because I think it's a... Maybe we'll have it. Leave it with me. Leave it with me. We'll have a look. We'll see what we can, what we can find for you, if that would help. So your last layer, you're folding it over exactly the same way, but you're just going to pin it in place this time. No stitching? No stitching. Just pin it. Okay. So then you go on to your next quarter. Um, I started Can we see a quick close-up of what that finished quarter looks like? Yeah. It's, well, it's a quarter, is it? Oh, it's wow. So you can see the point of the star is starting to come. Oh, my goodness, that looks gorgeous. It gives a really lovely effect. Yeah, it does. Okay. So then you'll work your way around. So just go to the next quarter and do exactly the same thing. And do you have to keep turning it the same way? Um, no, I don't, I don't think so. As long as you're folding it right to left or left to right, but consistently, whichever way you do it, just keep going. I mean, naturally, for a right-handed person, you're going to turn it anti-clockwise, but for a left-handed person, you'll be turning it clockwise. It's, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. You just work your way around. Um, so I'm going to do the next one just to show you then about the placement of the triangle. You'll work your way around until you've made the full Thing. So we go again, um, folding the first fabric number one, folding it in half, placing it down across the gap, and then bringing it back across again. That's the only why time you do it, yeah, that. Why doesn't that get folded across like it, the others? Because it forms that, there's, there's not enough room in there, and it forms that extra little tuck uh, in there. Oh, okay. It is pretty, actually, that little extra. Yeah, it just sort of gives you that star effect, I think. And this is where, if you sewn it properly into the middle, you won't get any extra folds or anything. It will <laughs> fold uh, flat. The big if. And again, just using finger, finger pre pressing is ideal because it gives it that little bit of texture. It will sort of stand out a little bit. Folding the next one into a triangle and pulling that across and then doing the same with the other one. And you can see I'm just sort of tucking it, the folded side in to the edge of the seam and folding that over. You want your fabric as flat as you can get it really, but without pulling it or stretching it, distorting the shape. But by finger pressing it, you get that little bit of a, of a, a crease but a nice sort of soft fold, really, rather than a flat, a flat effect. So once you've done the middle one and two layers, so fabric one, two and three, we just sew that. Right, now we have to say a big happy birthday to Ems for tomorrow. Oh, happy birthday, Em, for tomorrow. It's, um, am I allowed to say, Ems, that it's a biggie? There's a zero in it. Oh. Exciting times. But what a, what a funny, what a funny year to have a funny, for, to have a big birthday on. Yeah, my sister had her 50th, which... Well, yeah, it would be a similar, yeah. a similar type birthday, yeah. which is strange given that we're both still 20. Yes. I don't know how that happened. No. <laughs> Very strange situation. Yeah. It's like when her daughter got married last year. That was strange given that she's still seven. Uh, I don't know how that happened no, either. No, it's just, it just, yeah. We were talking about this the other day and saying, you know, listening to music from the 80s and you think oh that's only a few years ago and then you suddenly <laughs> realize that it's actually 40 years ago and you're like what oh how did that, how did that happen? happen 
Yeah, and you wonder why, yeah, you see, working at Hochada, it's worse because, um, uh, because all the floor managers, they get none of my references and I suddenly realise yeah, I'm the... not trendy or down with the kids. Yeah, you think you're more. <laughs> Mm. Emma says it's okay to say her age. Em's half a century it's of not so Emma bad. fabulousness going on. Yeah, it's not so bad. I was okay about being 50. I wasn't so happy about being 30, which is weird. I didn't mind being 40 either, but... Really? 30 really, like, hit me. Didn't really want to be that age. It just happened as well that it was... My birthday's in June, and it happened that it was the, that June that we just had constant rain. Oh, no. And I wanted to have a big party in the garden, and of course well, didn't have it. Happen. See, last year, Stephen and I both had ones ending in zero, and um, so we had a joint 90th. Lovely. I went to, um, I went to a friend's, and they, had a, they were both 60 the same year, and it was a 120th birthday party. Awesome. <laughs> it was lovely. Awesome. Um, Lorraine's just asked if we've got any extra backing for the blue kits. Guys, what I'll do, as soon as we come off air and before I go off to the vets, I'll try and order up some more of this fabric and, um, and I'll let someone know who can load it because I'll be driving. Um, and um, <laughs> Lo says she cried when she turned 30 because she was grown up. Yes, I think that's probably <laughs> what it is, isn't it? You're just like, you can get away with still sort of not doing much but by the time you get to 30 people are expecting you to know what you want to do with the with your life and stuff yeah no i was okay with 30. yeah i, I was all right with 30. that was okay um well i mean becky says that uh 50 is the new 30 anyway yeah and geraldine says that her husband is just asking if he can borrow a creative grid ruler to draw a plan for a kitchen uh <laughs> And she I said, think not. <laughs> well, <laughs> she said, guess what I said. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure that we can say that. No. <laughs> it's not uh, the language of a lady. <laughs> oh, Ginny's late. She says, morning, everyone. Got caught, uh, caught some beautiful... No, oh, you Scottish lot have got lovely weather. It's well, horrible I it's here. it's got to stop somewhere, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Joanna says she was the same as Jane. I went into a bit of a decline when I got to 30, 40 or 50, okay. But I'm 60 next month and that is really scary. Oh, yeah. that's all right. I think, I think 60's not old anymore, is it? I don't think we think of 60 being old. I think when you start getting into your 80s, 90s, that's when we start thinking that you're old. My mum decided that 60 wasn't old when she got to 59. Yeah. <laughs> This is I a think trouble, and I don't know about anybody else, but you still feel like you're about 18, 20, don't you, in your head? Yeah, absolutely. And then you try and bend or do something, yes. you when know. you look, catch yourself, reflection, and you're like, ooh, old lady. Excessive. Carol says she wouldn't mind being 30 now. Well, yeah. Yeah, knowing what you know and going back to being 30, that would be nice. Oh, gosh. So you can imagine that you just work your way around, doing each um, eighth as you go, just working your way round and you will end up with four quarters looking like this. So this is where the triangles come in. So you've got your five inch squares and you're just going to cut those across the diagonal. Rotary cutter. I helps. see Jenny says that she'll be 66 on the second. Oh, happy birthday to you. She says she's moking the most of being a wild 65. <laughs> it's been a bit of a wild year, hasn't it? Let's yeah, be honest. I was going to say, this year is just like nobody cares anymore. There'll be a lot of 51st birthday parties, won't there, and 41st. Yeah, so. absolutely. Um, okay, so you've got your triangles and you're placing these across the corners now now these obviously they're bigger than they need to be because you've got a little bit of sort of maneuverability if you like on these and it's a little bit of working it by eye because you want to cover over you want to stitch over these folds here to hold them down but you don't want to cover the top the point of the star so you're sort of maneuvering it and you want to place your triangle on and sort of fold it back and have a look because you want to get it to cover that foundation there but you also want to be sure that you've sewn over your lines so it might be that your seams are half an inch or it might be that your seams 
three eighths of an inch or a quarter of an inch or whatever. It's very much doing it by eye. So what I was sort of doing is I was lining it up with fabric sort of five-ish. Yeah. On so lining the point, up, making sure the point of the triangle is in along that seamed line. Yeah. But then just sort of pinching it and folding it back and having a look to make sure that it was in the right up. place. So that when I fold it down, it's covered those two raw edges seams there. So it will hold, by sewing it down, it will hold the seams. But when I fold it back, it still covers that foundation piece there. So just when you're happy with it, just give it a finger press again and flip it back again, trying not to move it, and then pin it down ready to sew. Okay. And the, the, thing, the, the crease is your sewing line. Is your sewing line. Okay. I see Jackie says her mum's 86, but she refuses to join the over 60s club as they're full of old people. <laughs> <laughs> My granddad used to say that when he lived in a, a nursing home and he was in his 80s. And he used to say, oh, I've been down and chatted to the old folk this morning. <laughs> yeah, you see, my granny used to do the same. She used to teach art to the old folk. Yeah. Well, like, you're older than most of yes, them, most granny. Of She's like, well, that's not the point, is it? Like, okay, fair it's enough. what you feel, isn't it? Absolutely. Very much. And my granddad was very sort of young in his outlook. Now, Donna's done something very sensible. She's brought her hubby some big scissors to stop him from using hers. That's See, a good that idea. is very sensible. Can I recommend, if you're, if you're doing that, which is clever, the new Fiskar scissors that we've got? They're $14.99 for the universal ones. They're on a cracking price. I think they're about half price. Um, I can't Just remember, remember exactly. Just remember to take your pin out that you pinned your folded fabric down with. Oh, yeah, it's going to help because you can't really sew through it. <laughs> Well, you know, you could give it a go. You could try, but it yeah. won't do your machine much good. Beverly, as soon as we come off air, like I say, I will see what I can get colour-wise, um, and I'll see if I can get another whole blue collection plus um, backing fabric for the blue. Which colour back? Oh, is it the the batiky one that Darky Josh blue. likes? Yeah, that sort of the super sparkly. Yeah, the one that blue. looks like space. Sky, yeah. All right, I'll do that then. I will try my very hardest, peeps. So once you've sewn that triangle down, then you'll just fold that back and you'll pin it in place. Okay. And you'll do that with all the corners. Oh, this is looking fabulous. Jane. So that is basically oh, wow. your block. Oh, hang on. Whoa. Oh, there we go. Let's move it down a bit. There we go. That looks so good. So once you've done all the folds, do all the folds first and then put your corners on. Yeah and you'll just press that down and that's your block to which then I added um, it was an inch let's bring this forward it's all in the instructions there's an inch strip there 10 inches and then 11 um, and then two and a half inch wide strips at the sides if you I just put a backing on here I don't done a very basic envelope back so these pieces were by the time I got the, this border on, I think it was 15, maybe 15 and a half. Anyway, measure it. That width by 11, 12 inches, I think it was. Folded it over a quarter of an inch and over again and hemmed it. Put those two pieces so they're overlapping and then sewed all the way round. All the way round. But you could bind it the edge if you wanted to. You could do that if, if you wanted to with one of the fabrics. If you're just doing one block... You'd have enough left over of some of your fat, other fat quarter to do binding with. If you want to do three blocks, make it into a table runner. If we just, I don't know if we can do this, but we'll have a go. What are we doing? What are we doing? Um, oh, we're going off piste. You would put What's going on, Jane. Three blocks. <laughs> These would be your Steady. three blocks, and you would just put a triangle Hang on. Where in here. Where did this come from? They've multiplied. <laughs> this is <these> my. <laughs> demonstration pieces <laughs> i've got great plans of having everything all you know all done and i'm just like oh just do this and this from your other um fat quarter that you'll have put of your background fabric from this you'll cut a 15 and a quarter inch square i think it is which you will then cut into four so you would have a triangle this is bigger than the triangle that you would have it would probably be about that size maybe right looks like a bandana and that will go in there. Nice. So if I turn that round, you can see how that works. Oh, yeah. 
So you'd sew one like that. You'd sew your other one so it was like that. And then this one, you sew it opposite, one going that way and one going that way. And when you put them together, they all fit in. Oh, wow. And so that's what your table runner would look like. Lois says that she thinks you've got magic fingers. You make it look easy. She's calling you a witch. <laughs> and not in capitals. Shouty, shouty capitals. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Ginny says it's a beautiful star. And Donna would like to know how big is the cushion? That cushion is about 15 inches square. So if you wanted to make it bigger or smaller, you could just adjust the width of your yeah, you could here. add you could add extra bits, yeah. couldn't you? There is a little bit of manoeuvrability with what you've got left over of your half meter. Yeah. Not a vast amount, but I had probably a couple of about two inches left over of fabric. Oh, okay. From when I'd made Should the cushion. Well the f oh, nice. So, um, and I don't. I think I took the end bit of the bolt, so I don't think I had a full half meter. Did you? Yeah. That was really good of you. I think I had eighteen inches on my piece. So. Yeah, you probably would be able to get a deeper border. Well, that's amazing. Um, Annie says it looks sumptuous. It is. And I mean, this blue colourway is just lovely. That's really sparkly, isn't it? And that would look really nice down the centre of your Christmas table. Oh, it's a bit special. Um, Helen wants to know what weight calico. I don't think it matters, does it? It doesn't matter. Not the I calico. Mean, this, is, this is quite a... This is, I think it's a bit of your good quality calico, but... Any calico will do. I wouldn't you a uh, calico's fine. I did do it with some muslin and the muslin was a little bit stretchy. Yeah. So it didn't wishy, quite it? so when you're pulling your tri your triangles over, sometimes it can sort of distort it slightly. It worked, it worked fine. Um and interfacing is brilliant as well. Uh, but Joanna it's quite says heavy. Once right. you've made it, it's it, it's quite heavy. So um with the with the um table runner and the wall hanging i did put wadding behind it but i didn't do very much quilting on it right i just quilted it around need the it, star it? and just sort of echo quilted on the inside of the triangles there yeah and obviously see, I bound have, that as well i'd have that as a wall hanging just mm, so the three as a hanging, straight yeah. it'd be really it gorgeous really nice um joanna she said the fabric the project is fabulous sorry i missed the beginning do you have the blue we did it's sold out and as soon as we come off air i'm going straight to see if i can order some more there will be a delay on that because obviously, you know, yeah. it'll have to be ordered. And as I said, when my mum did hers, she just, she did each square, a slight, the, the um, order of the fabric, she did slightly different each time. Oh, so each one's slightly different? So each oh, one, nice. although it's the same fabric, so it's just slightly different. And it was, oh. it's really effective. And I don't know. Oh yeah, she's so she's got, no, she's, uh, she's WhatsApped you the picture. Oh, has she? If I just, yeah. whiz over here, we might be able to get a close up of it. See if I can oh, no, she's had it. a Teams meeting and they, well, they could hear us all in the background. <laughs> <laughs> she told them all that Jeff was watching a lady doing sewing. <laughs> Poor Jeff. There we go. If I, can we get that picture? Will it uh, work? If we... Let's see. Oh, nice. Oh, that's gorgeous. So you can see that, that that's what it looks like as the table runner. Oh, that's really pretty. If we can get it a bit bigger. Oh, there we go. oh wow. As you can see, there's different combinations give different effects. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Very oh, nice. Yeah. And it does look lovely. Yeah. Very you good. Go. Oh, thank you. All hanging. And thank you, Kate, for sharing as well. I love that she's already got that. She wants another one. She's already got her order in. Yeah. <laughs> she's probably, because that colourway, I think she wanted the red one. I think she's thinking about her dining room. Oh, that's that dining fine. room's all red and gold. Oh, nice. Is it red and gold all year round or just Christmassy? No, just all year round. Oh, yeah. I think we, it's dining room red, the red on the walls. It's dining room perfect. red. Perfect. We used to have a really dark bottle green for our... Oh, lovely. For our, um, when growing up as a kid. And it was... But we only really used it for Christmas. That was the only time the dining room was yeah, ever used. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I suppose we use it most at Christmas. But yeah. It just get used at special occasions as well. Yeah, well, I mean, like, Mum and Dad would have, you know, adult dinners. Yes. But obviously yeah. I was small. I just got the after eights that were left over the next morning. <laughs> yeah. uh, Geraldine says the blue is stunning. Love what you, Jane. You're mesmerising. Yeah. Um, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you. And Joanna says, no rush. 
she's got a, yeah, she's got a couple of projects. Yes, yeah, so I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, the rest yeah. of us, we're not like. <gasps> yeah, I will honestly. I'll put on Facebook. Keep an eye out on Facebook. I'll put. A, I'll, I'll let you know if I've got. So just to be clear, we want more stock of the of the blue star. Yeah. And red glittery backing. Uh, do we want? Should I get green glittery backing? Because that would work for both. Yeah. Um, and what else do we want? Extra blue starry starry. Yeah. Stuff. Right. That's my shopping list. Okay. I am on it. <laughs> on Brilliant. it. Brilliant. <laughs> um, Laurie says, as usual, you are a star. Thank you, Laurie. What are we doing next week? Oh, it's block a month next block week. Of the month. I keep week again. It's first second of December. Here we go again, the first week in the of the month. Where's that month gone? Jane, where has the year gone? Oh don't. Well, we'll all be glad to see the back of this year, won't we? I think I don't know. It's been a real mixed one. It has, hasn't it? I mean, for some of us it's Natasha, it's worked really well. <laughs> well, I mean I think somebody every... just launched a business yeah. and doing <laughs> captive audience. You know, yeah, it's worked really well. for better. Yeah. But, you know, it's not been the case for everyone. No, so, some people haven't had such a good year. But we we try to make it better for as many yes, as we can. Yes, we do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Becky just wants it all. That's fine. And, uh, yeah, you are being called the witch sewing lady again. But in a <laughs> loving way. In a, she'd like to make that. it clear in a loving, <laughs> loving, loving way. That. So, um, and Joanna still hasn't started her block of the months. That's okay. That's okay. You've got time. Yeah, you you know, need to make the block no keeper first to yeah. keep your blocks in. <laughs> Not a race. Not, you don't get anything for coming first. No. There no. we go. Uh, but do make sure that you stock up on your backing fabric because that's now in um, if you want any, you know, if you need any. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so next Monday we are all about the um, wreath along. Lovely. And I might have a few little bits of fabric, you know, kicking about that you might want to look that at. That you'll love. <sighs> They're a bit special, aren't they? They're a bit gorgeous. Let me tell you this. You'll want them. You will want them. <laughs> I think we've already put dibs on them, haven't we? Yeah, I think yeah, so. It's fair enough. Um, right, everybody. Uh, I'm going to go make that order. I'm going to take more to the vet. Jane, thank you as ever. You're a superstar. You're we welcome. will get your blocks out to you. Um, they're going to be posted about Friday, aren't they? Yeah, I'm going to work to aim to get that to for Friday. Yeah, definitely. Um, Joanna says, is that the backing fabric for the quilt? Well, any quilt. Really pick a quilt, any quilt. Um, and Lois says, you've helped me this year. Lost my mum <coughs> and my friend last week. And if it wasn't for you, I'd um, I'd be... In, I'd be drunk in a corner oh bless you well no. do you know what it's one of those things it's isn't it it's the hardest thing when you lose people we've lost people this year as well and it's just because you can't go to the funerals can you you know it's it, it, if it's you know even as some people for immediate family they can't there's yeah there's, yeah you know you're only allowed so many so yeah it's been a very hard I year in that way i think you're not alone and no. it is it's finding ways to take your mind off it and keep going. Yes. And, uh, yeah. and that's what we do. And we're all here for you, by the way. Yeah. And uh, Susan says, um, happy Thanksgiving. Because, of course, right. that's the other yeah. thing. It is ha this Thanksgiving. Because it's my, my nephew's birthday as well. You see, it's Hal's birthday today. Right. Uh, no, tomorrow, rather. Yeah. Um, who is five. Oh. And he was a Thanksgiving baby. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, everybody, look... Um, stay safe remember our community you know we do have a lovely community and we've got yes, a lovely community page generally sewing quilting ladies are very supportive we're we all are here we all chat if you need chatting to <laughs> don't ever <laughs> don't ever feel like you're on your own you're absolutely not no no no, no we're all here we're very all here much so. to listen even if that's all you need is there somebody just to talk to yeah we well apart from when we're not here because i'm organizing fabric no but <laughs> We're still here remotely. We're here. Yeah. Yeah. But we're sending you all big hugs. Anybody we're that definitely. needs a big hug, consider yourself hugged. Definitely. And we, we love all... hugs around here, even though we're not allowed to. Oh, yeah. Secret hugs. We don't. We, yeah. I'm, that's what I miss more than anything is hugging people. That's why you need a dog. Yeah. Definitely. Daisy Dogs loves being hugged, so that's fine. That's, that's, that's the one. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Well, look, you see, everybody, everybody is getting lots and lots and lots. Oh, <laughs> Gemma says, I can chat for sure. <laughs> yes. We can't deny that. No, nope. we cannot deny that. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, everybody. Um, thanks, Natasha. We'll have another session soon. Yes, Vera, on Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're here. 
Excellent. And uh, I've got to work out now what I'm doing for Hojanda tomorrow. There we go. Fun nice. times. <laughs> Fun times. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Loads of lugs for everyone. Lugs? Hugs. Lugs and hugs. Lugs and hugs. Lugs All right, then. You lot. Take care. Everyone. Take Stay care. Safe. Stay bye -bye. safe. And uh, we'll see you on social media. Bye 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 bye.